Now, in the last episode, we learned how to successfully prepare some data, pass it to the view, and then have the view use Laravel's Blade templating engine to render a series of list items. But now, as you may know, in real life, you're probably not hard coding the tasks. You are storing them, whether it's in a database or Redis or somewhere. Let's assume a database. Now, you'll remember a couple of episodes ago where we briefly touched on migrations. And I noted that Laravel includes two out of the box for a user's table and then a table for password resets, which might be a bit above our pay grade right now, so we can ignore that. But user's table is fair enough. Now, when you see this class, there's a lot going on here. We're importing uh, some various classes, we're extending the migration class, and then we have an up method and a down method. Now, don't worry, for your own migrations, you're not gonna have to manually write this. So if I were to say PHP artisan from the command line, you're gonna see that we have this section called Mink, and there's a bunch of these. Think of this area as your file generators. Maybe you wanna make a model, an active record model. Maybe you need to create a mail class. Maybe you have a queued job. Maybe you need a controller. Any of those things can be automatically generated for you. So in our case, we wanna create a migration. So if we ever wanna learn more about any command here, you can say PHP artisan help, and then paste in the name. So what we can see is we have to give it one argument, the name, and then we have a handful of options if you need to override the defaults. So let's try it. PHP artisan make a migration, and then we have to give it the name, right? What is the name of our migration? Well, generally, you're gonna give your migrations a name that corresponds to what you're doing. So for example, in this one, we are creating a users table. So the name was create underscore users underscore table. Now, if we're gonna have this uh, example of tasks, Maybe we have a tasks table. Create tasks table. Okay, great. So now you'll see if we switch over, we have a new migration stub populated for us. But let's try one other thing. Let's delete the file. And if we run the help again, you'll see that one option is to specify the name of the table that we are creating. Let's try it again. We're gonna run it and say create tasks. Now in this case, it's failing, only because we need to redump our files. Laravel will do that behind the scenes, but you can mostly ignore that. It won't happen too often. Anyways, let's give it another run. And this time, if we load it, because we added this option here, Laravel knows that, oh, we are creating a table, so I will prepare the necessary uh, boilerplate to get you started. Create a table called tasks, and then the schema for it, and basically this section will correspond to this. So let's imagine a task, what does a task consist of? Maybe a title, and then maybe it also consists of the body of the task. But let's keep ours simple. It just consists of the body. Uh, now it's possible that it will be associated with the user. And you'll notice that these methods we call just correspond to the data type. So text will be long form text. String will be useful for things like a name, a last name, an address. Integer, of course, will correspond to a number, and then timestamps. There's a lot of these here, but uh, as always, Laravel's documentation will work perfectly for you, or uh, if you have the means and you know how, you can always inspect these classes directly once you feel a bit more comfortable. Anyways, so now that we've defined what a tasks table should look like, if we switch over to SQL Pro, there is no tasks table, right? And that's because we've prepared a migration, but we haven't migrated the database. Let's do that now. PHP artisan migrate. So it detected that we have a new one, so it created the tasks table. And if we give it a refresh, there it is. So we have the body and, oh, whoops, the user ID. Uh, we're not gonna have that for our example. So in situations like this, when you make a mistake, just delete it and then refresh your migrations. Let's take a look. We're gonna search for migrate and you'll see that there's a handful, whoops, you'll see that there are a handful here. One is called refresh. Reset, so basically roll back all of our migrations and then rerun them. Let's try it. PHP Artisan Migrate Refresh. So roll back every migration. You'll see that it goes through the tasks and then the users and passwords from a couple episodes ago. And then it reruns them from scratch. It's sort of like version control for your database. But anyways, if I give this a refresh, now we have our data. So let's manually populate this. Go to the store. And for timestamps, I'm just gonna use the MySQL now function. All right, let's create one more. Finish screencast. 
like so. All right, so now I have a task table with two records in it, and I want to fetch those. Let's go back to Sublime, and I'm going to show you two different ways. We're going to say tasks, and we're going to say, let's close out my sidebar. I'm going to use this DB class. I'll specify the table name, and then we want to get all records. Okay, so before we load a view, take a look at this. If you ever return a database query from a route, Laravel is smart enough to automatically cast that to JSON. And this makes it especially nice for uh, things like APIs. And here we can see that we do have the two. And then once again, we're going to run this. But this time, it's a little different. It'll fail, right? Yes, it does. And that's because tasks is a collection of objects. And specifically, if I want to echo out the body, then I have to call it task body. All right, back to Chrome, give it a refresh, and there we go. So if we were to add a new record, clean the house, if we come back and refresh, there we go. Now, as it turns out, this is Laravel's query builder. It gives us a really nice, elegant syntax to specify a table, add any number of conditions. So for example, maybe I want only the tasks that were created uh, greater than a certain time or before a certain time. Maybe I want to order them in a specific order. All of that functionality is available to us. Now, on that note, maybe we want a separate route to view a specific task. Okay. Well, maybe if we look for tasks slash and then an ID, and notice this syntax here, a key surrounded by curly braces. In Laravel, we call this a wildcard. And that means we want to respond to tasks slash five or 20 or anything. It's a wildcard. We can even call it task. Now we can accept the ID and let's just die and dump the ID. This is a, a helper function Laravel provides and you're gonna use it all the time. So if we visit tasks slash three, you'll see that we fetch that number. So yes, what we could do is fetch the task by doing find ID. And now if we die and dump the task and refresh, you'll see that we found that one or tasks slash two or one. Nice. And even better, a little later, I'll show you how to make this even more seamless by doing something along the lines of this. Once we put things in place, this task variable will automatically be populated with the necessary record. It's very, very cool, and we'll get to it soon enough. Anyways, at this point, we might call tasks slash show, or in Laravel, it's more common that you'll see this syntax, tasks.show. You can use those interchangeably. And in general, it will refer to a directory path starting from your views directory. So let's set that up. Resources, views, tasks, show, dot blade. And once again, for now, we'll just spit out some HTML and then say task.body. All right, so let's try it out. We're gonna set up one route for tasks that will fetch all tasks and then load, let's create a new one here, tasks.index, so that we can keep those together. So we'll grab that and store it here, index.blade.php. So now all tasks will load this view but then if you want to visit a specific task, well, we'll check to see whatever the user typed in to the URI or whatever linked them to that page, fetch the ID, find the task that has that ID, and then load a view, passing through the variable, and then we echo out the body. Okay, let's try it. All tasks, or the task with an ID of one, or two, or three. So now, as you can imagine, each of these could be links. And that will go to slash tasks slash the ID of the task, like so. We'll give it another shot, clean the house, finish screencast, or go to the store. So now maybe you're starting to get a bit more comfortable. It's not quite so scary, uh, but it's even gonna get simpler. So in the next episode, well, I'm gonna show you how to use Laravel's active record implementation, which is called Eloquent. That will allow us to turn something like this into this. It's really cool. I can't wait to show you.